Hello, everyone out there in the podcast world. I hope you're having a great day. If you're listening to or watching the Service Business Mastery Podcast, I'm your host, Church Plissett. Today's episode, we have Frank Forte, and we're going to talk about agile leadership and kind of uh, a little bit about just what that means and kind of uh, how to lead without being like a, in the in the industrial age. Is that the best way to say that, Frank? Like it's a, a different a different way of thinking. Uh, and I love this. I love talking about leadership in general because as leaders, most of the people listening here are some sort of leader, whether you're a leader in the field as a service expert and you're thinking about starting up your business or you're a leader who um, has a you know $20 million business. Uh, you, th- we're talking leadership and a lot of times you hear this complaint about millennials. They'll, they just don't want to work. They don't want to do anything. But sometimes, a lot of times, most of the times I'd say, we haven't stopped and, and to think about the fact that is it is it the fact that they don't want to do something or is it our leadership skills are we not communicating properly uh, are we not communicating with the consumer has our consumer changed to uh, demand different things and we haven't pivoted we haven't done what we need to do on our end uh, to ensure that um, we're communicating properly and, uh, and I'm, I'm excited to talk to you today, uh, Frank. Uh, welcome to the show. Thank you. Great to be here, Tur. Absolutely. So tell us a little bit about yourself. We were talking before we, we went live here um, that uh, you're in the Navy, you're in a submarine. <laughs> I just, uh, I, I haven't, um, we have a, we have, we had a guy on our staff that uh, he was fresh out of the Navy and submarines. And uh, I, I was always, I don't know why I'm so inquisitive about the experience of people who are stuck underwater or stuck in a confined space with so many people for such, and I don't have claustrophobia, claustrophobia, but I feel like I would have claustrophobia if I was there. Uh, but it, just tell us a little bit about yourself and your experience and, and everything that you have going on. Sure. I, you know, I, I, I was telling you a little bit earlier, I grew up in the restaurant business in Columbus, Ohio, yeah. uh, moved, moved to, you know, join the Navy to see the world and get out of the Midwest and um, ended up in submarines. Uh, it's true. A series of uh, um, raising my hand and volunteering over and over. So <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think you're supposed to do that. That's, that's what I was told. Like, don't volunteer for anything. <laughs> Um, but yeah, it, it was a, a great experience. It was, um, it, I tell people if they've ever he, uh, seen the movie, The Hunt for Rod- Red October, I um, saw that movie, uh, that movie in a theater in Columbus. Mm. And the first four times I saw it, I had so many flashbacks. I couldn't tell you anything about the movie. Wow. So I can't tell people what I did, but it, go see that movie. And, yeah. and, and uh, it had a big impact on me, but yeah, I mean, you know, hanging out, uh, 80, 90 days underwater. Um, you know, a couple cool things we do is we keep all of our garbage with us. And, you know, I, I, I didn't think about that. Uh, 120 guys. And Oh, by the way, we keep it in the engine room where it's normally 120 degrees. So we mm-hmm. cook all of our garbage. So, you know, you, you get that marinated flavor. Uh, <laughs> Um, you know, we, we take showers when we do take showers every couple of weeks or so, because we have to make all of our own water. So you got 120 guys. And back then it was all, all men taking showers every couple of weeks, um, you know, getting dirty, you know, you know, lube oil, all kinds of stuff, you know, just getting dirty. And, um, and so then you get to take, uh, showers every couple of weeks and you do it in a stainless steel box. That's about two by two. And so the submarines, you know, rocking and rolling. And so you're bouncing off these cold metal walls. Um, those are just some of the fun things you get to do. Well, the thing, the, the, the awesome thing about the human body is your, your nose is crazy. Your mouth is here. Less than an inch above your mouth is, is this device that it's a defense, but also... I don't know. It's uh, a weapon at the same time because you 
you can go weeks without brushing your teeth and everyone around you can know really quickly that you have not brushed your teeth, but you don't realize how bad your breath smells and your nose is literally an inch above it, but your body develops this natural, just acclimation to this odor. And so do you, do you, I yeah. perceive that that's maybe happened to you while you're on the submarine. Yeah. One of the things, one of the neat things that, you know, kind of validates that is we made our own air, right? We uh, made our own water, made our own air. So for 80 days, we would be in this container of pure air. Oh, wow. And when we opened up the hatches, everybody got a cold because we weren't used to the germs that normally occur in in the atmosphere and we were out in the middle of the ocean right we Wait, so what you're saying right now is if you quarantine yourself for 80 days and then you go back out into the general public you get sick yeah and, and i'm not and, trying to put words in your mouth right now no, but but, just, I mean, just, just think about the hvac component yeah, I, I, that's it, exactly what i'm thinking about yeah uh, uh, co2 scrubbers we had uh, pure uh, we made our own oxygen we made perfect air and, and there was nothing in there, but, you know, um, and we kept it at about 11% oxygen yeah. because if it went below, people couldn't light their lighter to light their cigarettes and then they got all pissed off. Oh, get all pissy. <laughs> <laughs> so you knew when the, the, the HVAC tech had gotten the mixture a little wrong. <laughs> Oh, that's terrible. And but the thing about it is it could be it could go really bad too if you had if it was crazy um oxygen levels and everything yeah. else. Yeah. Man, that the pressure on, on that guy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh man, that's really cool. So it's, it's and this this has I say this has nothing to do with our conversation, but it, I mean it does, but um it's um it's really cool how how much the HVAC industry and the plumbing industry is, is how important it is in the entire world. And, um, you know, we're in the, in the midst of a pandemic and, you know, things were really bad. Then they got good and people, you know, um, they got real comfortable and then things got really bad again. Um, it, it got bad here, um, locally because we never really got into a situation to where we, um, we're in like a super strict lockdown. So like a, my wife um, just got back from Columbus, Ohio. Uh, that's where she's from. That's where her family's from. We were talking about that a little bit earlier. And um, when she was up there, she was like, wow, it was a, a massive difference between, you know, Savannah, Georgia and Columbus, Ohio, because there it was legit. Like everybody was policing everybody about having masks on and staying safe, you know, distances and everything. I was like, that makes sense. Um, and then you come here and it's um, like nobody says anything about any to anybody about a mask or anything like that. It's very, very like relaxed type uh, um, scenario. And it's a huge difference, a shift between the two of them. <clears throat> and um, it's just like it, obviously we don't I, I'm I'm a proponent of not wanting a controlled a controlled state. Uh, you know, like I don't want people telling me every single move that I have to make personally. Um, it's just, <clears throat> if we don't figure out a way to make this go away or solve this solution, you know, it's, it's going to be an ebb and flow where it's going to just come and go for years. If we don't, if we don't solve this and figuring out a solution like, like you did there in the Navy is like, you you created your own air like that's that's just mind boggling for people for me whenever your entire life you're you know you're told that if we don't stop killing the rainforest we're gonna die you know if we don't start, stop cutting it up you've y'all found a solution to recycle air and and make it so it's healthy and breathable and so much so that it was so clean that whenever you introduce bacteria and viruses y'all started getting sick you know um that's like that's just to me and, and it's something that i had theoried about but not actually really had any like testing or or, or 
um, proven facts. And, and I'm going down a rabbit hole and I know that totally, I got it. But I just, just one of those things where it's like, dang, how does that, I mean, I'm not going to ask you what year it was because it was cold war. We're just going to say that. So, um, a situation there can relate to something that would happen in 2021. And, and it's wild how you, you don't think that stuff at that time could associate to things at this time. Um, but it, it, it crazily does. And it, and not only that, I mean, just think about the way you led, like how, how were you led at that time as a, as a, subordinate to a leadership how was it that you were talked to and how did you react to that to being talked to that way and then now could you get away with doing the exact same thing i mean how how would that even play out you know? i mean one of the things that uh people that haven't been in the military and and i know you yeah were a combat controller and and that's a team-based activity right uh you uh, no matter who you were working with, it might be Army, it might be Marines, it doesn't really matter. Um, you were part of the team. Okay. Everybody wanted your expertise. You, they needed you. Uh, you were like gold. They were going to protect <laughs> you no matter what. Right? Oh, yeah. That was a good feeling. <laughs> um, uh, and there were a lot of big guys with big guns to make sure you could do your job. And that's how it was on the submarine. We didn't have this perceived hierarchy, this perceived, yeah, the captain of the submarine had his own stateroom. That stateroom was about eight foot by eight foot, large bathroom size. Yeah. Um, you know, um, I was, I came in as a very junior person on the submarine, but I had a skill set that they needed. So they listened to me. Mm. I, I could raise my hand at any time and say, this doesn't look right. You know, let, let's let's double check this. In the in the submarine environment, <clears throat> I feel like that you like if somebody says, "Hey, this doesn't look right," <clears throat> this doesn't look right. There's going to be a lot of people that are like, "Okay, shoot!" Like cause we're all underwater. And like somebody throws that red flag up, then it's it's like the Toyota model. Like yeah. anybody on the line can can hit that button. Yeah, it's called the Andon cord uh, in the Toyota model, and yeah. anybody can pull it. And, and, you know, Agile is based on Lean and, and the uh, Toyota production system was the foundation of Lean. And um, on the submarine, you know, there were 120 20 guys on the submarine. Once we left port, we had to solve it all ourselves. Uh, there were, you know, we couldn't call a service tech. You know, there was no, there was no, so we had to figure out how to solve the problem as a team. Mm. So everybody had a, and everybody was vested in the solution. Cause what I used to say all the time, all we got to do is let the outside in and we die. Mm. Right. So they, the submarine, they don't, they don't have to do much. Yeah. Uh, we don't come home. So everybody was vested. Oh, yeah. Everybody was held accountable. Accountability is a big thing. And I know you, you know, we talked a little bit about millennials. I think part of the training that millennials have to go through is accountability. I know you went through it in the military. I certainly went through it in the military. Yeah. Um, you just got to tell it the way it is. And so if you it's, talk, it's, you you're work. saying accountability is a good thing, and and it needs to happen. But how do you how do you do accountability with someone who has? And I'm not I'm grouping millennials together, but I want people who are listening to this who don't know me personally that just happen to wonder upon this show uh, to understand that I'm a millennial. And, and so when I throw people into this group, I throw myself in this group as well. And so like, and, and I know that I'm not this way. And so I'm not saying every millennial is this way, but the perceived uh, notion is that this a group of people who have never been held accountable, who have a, a group of, I mean, they, they, they're growing up with participation trophies. Uh, that's just kind of what we did. And so like, how do, how do you hold someone accountable who's never been held accountable and not have it perceived as being the big bean boss man that's doing that? I think part of that is education. Before the incident, a lot of leaders mm. don't educate on here's the expectation. I, I need you to speak up. You know, you were telling me about your escalation process that you have in your, in your business. Yeah. I need to know. 
If something's going sideways, I need to know as soon as you know. Don't ignore it. Don't try to fix it yourself. You don't have enough experience yet. Yeah. And and you've got to be real with them. You know, this is your business. The, it's the leader's business. Yeah. So uh, again, roles and responsibilities. You're you're the service expert. You've got the latest training that the industry has to offer. Here's how you work with people. Here's what I want you to say. This is how I want you to enter someone's house. This is, I want you to thank them. You know, you got to lay it out crystal clear, right? And then you can have accountability. If you just, as a leader, think this stuff in your head. <laughs> that doesn't happen. <laughs> Who does that? Well, they should know better, right? I get, like, how many I times? I've been that guy. I'd be like, what, what do you talk? What do you mean? You didn't know? Like everybody does that. That's just how you do things. Like, well, I didn't know that. Like, I can't get mad at that person. I did not instruct that person the right way to do it. I mean, uh, Julie, my wife and I, we were talking yesterday. Um, we were <clears throat> talking about a PM process that we have. We have, uh, two new, new, uh, service experts that came on board and we put both of these service experts on this large PM to try and knock it out in one day. And it was like, question, 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 question. I was like, what is, and these are from two people who like, they'll ask, they're, they're new to the team. So they'll ask a couple of questions, like just because they want to make sure that things are right. And they're, they're, they're not people pleasers, but they're very much going to, their, their goal is to make sure they do it right. And they don't want to fail us. And so they'll ask questions, but then it's, They'll connect the dots. They're, they're, they don't need every single step. Like if you skip a step here or there, they'll connect between the two steps. And, but it was like, question, question, question. I was like, what is going on right now? Like, I don't understand. Like we've done this maintenance for three years. Like uh, where, why are we having so many, what's, what's the disconnect? And uh, Julia's like, this stuff isn't written down. This is like back when we first started and, it's just one of our original accounts and, and we just all knew what to do on this job. Well, it's not written down the steps and all of the equipment that is touched and the stuff that is not touched. And um, because we do refrigeration and, you know, ice machines, yeah. uh, walk-in coolers. And they're like, are we doing the reach in? Are we doing the low boy? Are we doing the ice machine? We're like, yes, 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 yes. Why, why are you asking me these questions? Like, this is the stuff we've done every time. And they're like, it's not written down. And you're like, oh crap. Like, <laughs> I can't get irritated at that. Like, how is it not written down? Like, how have we done this so long? And, and this particular account has nothing written down on. And so it's like, I definitely couldn't reprimand. I mean, if they, if they were the least efficient people in the world on this job, like I couldn't reprimand them at all about any of this because I take on that responsibility as a leader, not ensuring that the proper um, procedure wasn't implemented, you know, the standard the SOP of the entire, you know, our business yeah. was skipped over there. And it's, it's my fault, not their fault as a leader. Yeah. I mean, you know, preventive maintenance is huge, you know, on a submarine, right? Because uh, you don't want things breaking at the wrong time. Mm -mm. So, um, you know, having literally step by step and, and people watch you do preventive maintenance. I mean, I used to do preventive maintenance on nuclear weapons. And so, <laughs> so talk about you, you want to do it right. You know, you don't want to screw that one up. Um, um, so, you know, just um, having it outlined uh, operations manuals. Uh, so with, with it, with, I'm sorry for interrupting you. I, I, I at laying it out like that so uh, i was telling you before we had um we have service expert came on straight from the navy um he was uh he did refrigeration hvac in on a submarine in, in the navy and so he came on board with us and it was like cool like y'all do processes and procedures and 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 for me i honestly feel like we we're one of the better companies out there that that that's my thing that's my that's what gets me going like doing process and procedures so like i have ways of doing it so fast now that there's no reason for us not to do it which is the whole reason my mind was blown yesterday whenever we had that conversation uh, but the 
he came in and he's like, you don't have anything. You don't have, pro- you don't have processes here. And I'm like, man, I'm patting myself on the back. Cause I feel like we're, <laughs> we're doing good. You know what I mean? And he's like, no, you, you don't, you're missing stuff. You're missing all kinds of stuff. Like I'm coming in here and what you just said is exactly what he was like. And I was, I was frustrated at the fact I'm like, no, man, like visit any other AC company. Like they, you're not going to see anything close to what we have. I mean, we have stuff, you know, information management systems. Like we have cloud-based stuff where you can access it from our website. Like as a service expert, you can see any process and procedure you want to in our entire business at the touch of your finger. You just sign into a website and, and you have your, you know, your membership sign in and everything like you, that's not normal for an AC company. Okay. Like, and I'm, I'm starting to take offense to it. And, and, and it's like, wait a minute, take a second back. Just because it's better than the way you did it yesterday, just because it's better than the other AC companies that you're comparing yourself to, is it really good? Is it better? I mean, just because you suck less than them, does, does it mean you don't suck? I mean, yeah, you, it's still bad. You know what I mean? And I was like, dang and, and it. That principle of continuous improvement is, you know, you're, you're the frog in the, in the pot, right? <laughs> it, it, you look around and say, hey, everything's pretty good around here. It's not too hot. I think I'll stay right here for a while. Yeah. But then somebody else comes in and says, hey, there's a whole nother level. Mm-hmm. You know, um, we're, we're some, you know, the, the Navy, especially submarines because of the risk and the inability to get help and aircraft, right? Um, even, even submarines are a little bit more dangerous than aircraft. Oh, yeah. Uh, because, you know, aircraft can land. Submarines, when they go down, nobody comes and gets them. Yeah. They just keep going and keep going yeah. and keep going. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I mean, the, the, and that's really where I first learned what a high performing team is, what it could be. And I've, I've spent most of my career trying to in, instruct, inform uh, other people on what the potentiality is. You, you just nailed continuous improvement and, and moving towards perfection, even though you never get, expect to get to perfection. That's what the, you know, we talked about Toyota a little bit. Yeah. That was their expectation is perfection, knowing full well, they would never get there. But uh, if there was a little, little thing wrong, mm. it was the responsibility of the line workers to call that out and well, not get in trouble for it. Yeah. I mean, that, that whole, th- that whole mindset and concept is, is amazing to me. And I don't know why we don't implement it more often. And, I think that, uh, well, I don't think, I know that it's definitely a a communication breakdown between leadership and and people in the field. And a lot of this pertains to, uh, it it falls on the back of a leader because we're, most of us came into the industry as, okay, I'm a good service tech. Um, I'm making pretty good money but my boss drives a new truck. So I'm going to buy, I'm, I want to be my boss. So I'm going into, you know, I'm going into the field. I'm starting my own business. Uh, and little do we know the, the business side of things, but we're really good service techs. And then we get into the business side of things and you're so deep in learning how to not go bankrupt that you kind of, a lot of times people just put the leadership aspect of it to the wayside and the people in the field become a disconnect to the people in the office. And then it's a, it, I mean, you can, you could limp along your entire career as a business owner and have that, you know, work uh, not successfully or happy or, or enjoyably, but it could work. But a lot of times there's, we're so disconnected between the field and the, and the office that, it's, uh, it's crazy how many times, like, and I, and I had this aha epiphany uh, a couple a year or so back whenever I, I was talking to a guy and it was like, uh, yeah, but that, that happens all the time. Like that, yeah, it sucks. Like you do a ride along and you're like, why are you doing this? It's like four extra steps. That sucks. Like nobody wants to do that. Like this, you're wasting 20 minutes every day or 20 minutes, every service call times four calls a day like that. How much that's adding up 
quickly. And I'm thinking, I'm thinking money and, you know, net profits. He's thinking time, like it just sucks, like to repetitively do stuff. And I'm like, why haven't you said something? And you're like, it's just the way it's been. It's, it's the way we've done things. We're like, no, like yeah. pull that cord. Like you, how can we be more productive? What are we doing here? And it's that whole, and, and, and I, I'll be honest, uh, Simon Sinek was where I first heard that, that mentality. I know Toyota has been doing it forever. Uh, but I was listening to Simon Sinek and, and he mentioned it and I kind of did a deep dive in it and it was, it was the craziest thing. And it's the thing that I've been saying my entire career, but I never knew how to do it or put it into words. You know what I mean? And it, yeah, it, I mean, a lot of times, um, you know, and other companies have tried this, you know, the suggestion box I've been, you know, yeah. just, you know, give a $25 gift card. Just if, if they save you money, give them a little recognition, you know, kind of uh, fuel that um, engine, right? That creativity. You want them to create better systems for you. They're the ones who are the experts. They, they're the ones who have to do it all, all the time, day in and day out. And if, if, you, if you make them aware, and awareness is you know, one of the concepts I talk about in my book, is before awareness comes, you can't improve. Yeah. You've got to be aware that there's a, a one improvement is desired by the, the team Two that maybe there's some compensation, you know, there's a reward, mm -hmm. right? We are reward based beings. Um, <laughs> that don't be fixed. So, you know, um, it, it, you know, so little things, you know, um, just, you know, and it's going to take a while. It's going to take maybe up to a year to convince oh, okay. uh, those folks that you're serious. Yeah. And as as a leader, the first time you fly off the handle and get pissed off, guess what? You pretty much now it's going to take two years. Yeah, it's restart what, that time clock. Yeah, what they remember was you getting pissed off. Yeah. They didn't remember all the encouraging words that you said. Yeah, I'm here. I I, I want to hear your ideas. Um, so you, we got to learn. I mean, failure is inevitable. Mm -hmm. We want to fail small. Yeah, and we want to fail forward fast. Yeah. Right? That's how we keep up with this, the pace of change that's going on, and not just in your industry, just about every industry. Yeah. No, I believe it. So uh, you mentioned your book. I, I don't want to us, us to finish anything without you telling me about your book and, and where I can get it. Um, Agile Thinking Demystified. It came out in September. It's available on Amazon. You uh, you can just uh, Google my name, Frank Forte. It'll it'll come up. Um, and you know, it, it, if you've got a large firm that you want to make significant changes to, it's probably the book for you. But also everything we're talking about, the awareness, the continuous improvement, uh, how how to be a, a leader. Um, mm -hmm. You know, all those things are um, kind of in there. And it's a small book. Uh, it's pretty it's, it's pretty dense in, in the, the words. You know, it's, it's like a manual. Yeah. I wrote like a, a manual. Like, okay, I want to know about leadership. Okay, I, I flipped to that. Uh, experience. How do I grow people's experience? Okay, there's a section there for that. Um, so, you know, it's really for those people that want to take their business to the next level. Uh, can't afford maybe uh, to hire an executive coach yeah. like like I am. Mm -hmm. um, so I, it, it's kind of a gift, you know, to everybody. It's, uh, you know, and, and there's questions. Uh, you know, I've, I've got questions at the end of each section mm -hmm. to help you reflect and apply it to your particular situation because, you know, one size doesn't fit all. Yeah. And, um, you know, as we've talked about a lot of things, there's a lot of different uh, situations. You talked about uh, millennials. Maybe that's your biggest challenge and you're going to go through the book and every every question that gets asked at the end of the chapter, you're going to put it in that context. Uh, yeah, that's, or if, that's the hardest thing is, is listening to a book or reading a book and, and then you're like, how does this apply to me? Like, how do I make that work for us? 
and uh, having those questions and, and putting it in real life scenarios. That's really because a, a lot of times we will read or, or, or be presented with a, a book or a, a thought process. And the, the whole thing is like theory and theory, this and theory that and uh, putting things into practice, asking those questions and, and, and getting it, getting that feedback there is that is what's valuable to me because you know everybody has that the the value their time and everybody's busy and everybody has stuff going on um and so that's where i struggle at picking up a book and reading it because i'm like if i'm not getting value when i'm reading this like i don't read for fun like like that's yeah. not me i don't i'm not a funsies reader uh so if i'm not getting something out of this read uh, then it's, it's wasting my time and I could be making money or I could be improving a process some other way during this time. Uh, so that's huge value in its, in and itself. It, the fact that you can put that stuff in and, and ask that question and, and, and make that uh, correlation, that relationship between the two is awesome. I, and I appreciate you doing that as, as an author. That's awesome. Yeah. I, I made it, you know, so there's, you know, call outs, you know, in boxes. And so I made it so you can flip through it. And, and, you know, something will, you know, kind of uh, catch your, your eye. Uh -huh. uh, the, the sections are small, you know, three, four or five pages. Oh, yeah. uh, and so you can, you can take one of those, read it, um, might lead you someplace else. It might be enough. Um, so, you know, my, my vision for it is it ends up being a manual, you know, and it's all torn and tattered and, you know, bent and, and, you know, dog-eared and all that. But um, to me, it's, it's a manual um, on, on bringing an agile mindset into your organization. Um, and, you know, we, we talked about a few examples of what that really means, uh, but it's really empiricism. It's like, I'm not going to um, assume that I know I'm going to run some experiments. I'm going to get some feedback mm -hmm. and then I'm on pivot. Yeah. And, and make changes based on that experience. You know, you don't keep doing the same thing over and over and expect to get different results. Isn't that the uh, definition of insanity? Yep, exactly. <laughs> and that's how most businesses are run. That's how we, I've run in the past. <laughs> and, and you know, uh, in, in this day and age, a lot of times it's just working harder, not smarter. You know, you, you had a, a couple really good examples that, that you know, we chatted about. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, pertinent to, to your industry. Yeah. Cool. I, I, thank you for coming on the show. Did, did I not ask, is there any questions out there that I, that I, that we need to discuss before getting off here, before I ask uh, how people can connect with you? I, I don't think so. I, I, you know, quite honestly, we had such a great conversation beforehand. <laughs> yeah. Uh, before he started the, the, the recording. Yeah. I, I'm just, uh, it's all kind of mushed together, but I, oh, yeah. I really enjoyed the conversation. Yeah, I appreciate you coming on. I, I appreciate everything, honestly, uh, and sharing out all of your uh, your information with us and our knowledge. Um, where where can we um, learn more about you and and uh, connect with you with us? Uh, uh, Forte Leadership Technology mm -hmm. dot com is my website. Uh, I'm on LinkedIn, uh, Frank Forte or Forte Leadership Technology again. And um, yeah, great to be here. Great conversation. Uh, thank you for your service to our country. Same. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for your service. And thank you for doing that, being, being in, a, in under that water for so long. And you know, like, I, I'm a swimmer. I, I swim, but like there, there's only so much of that ocean that I can swim through. <laughs> so I appreciate that, honestly. Um, go ahead and thank you for coming on the show and thank you for sharing everything. And, uh, and I look forward to, uh, to learning more from you for sure. But with that being said, uh, thank you everybody also that's watching this and, and, and asking questions and Travis, Hey man, um, in the live chat on Facebook. Um, uh, thank you for watching the service business mastery podcast. This is the podcast focused on service business owners, managers, and technicians who are considering becoming business owners themselves. So with that being said, I hope you have a wonderful and safe week until we talk again next time. Uh, thank you again. Mm -hmm.